When you're building graphics and overlays, sometimes you want to move particular elements as a group for an animation instead of moving them individually. Typically in After Effects, you'd use what's called a null object to be able to move them. In Fusion, it's done a little bit differently, so let's go over how that is. Okay, so to show you how to do this, I'm just going to create a solid here quick make that into a compound clip, and then we'll jump over into Fusion. Okay, so I'm just going to bring in a background. We'll have that as black and a text. In the text, I'll just type in here, and then I want to make a blue line, so I'll grab another background, and I will go to blue. All right, I'll grab a rectangle. We'll connect that up. I'm going to hit two to play it in this viewer over here. And then on this rectangle, I am going to change the height and make it a small little line, something like that. And then we'll connect these up quick. I'll play this merge node and then go back to the rectangle to move this down like that. Make this a little smaller and bring this in like that. Okay, so right there, that is our overlay and we're going to lay that over top of our black background. So now we have our elements that are in, I guess you could call this all a group because they all come off of one merge node. If I play the merge node over here, we can see what this is going to be spitting out. And then we have our background going into another merge. So we're merging this group of items into the background to then get this as a result. So to be able to move all of these items, one thing that we could do is we could use what's referred to as a transform node. So I'm gonna hit shift spacebar, and then uh, you can type in transform or XF. You can type in, that's the shortcut to get transform. And then all we'll do is we'll just connect this to here and this here, and then our transform node, we can then move around all of, we can move them around together. So then we would be able to build an animation from this because we have one particular value. We have an X and a Y right here that we can then animate. So that's one way of doing it. But typically what you want to do is you want to make sure that you're using as few nodes as possible. So one cool thing that you could do is because this comes in, all of this stuff comes into this merge as a foreground, that's the green. All of the settings in here are how the foreground is going to be added to the background. So all of these different items here are, ex are stating how we're going to add whatever image comes out or comes into the foreground node or foreground connection, how that's going to be affected. So what I could do is click on the merge and I can move around the X and the Y on the merge and it's going to move around just the foreground elements. So that's another way of doing it. And it saves on, but if I did it here, if I did it here, it's only going to move around whatever's in the foreground, that's just the text. So we don't wanna do that one. So paying attention to how your nodes are set up is a really good way of being able to set this up correctly. So we know that we can use a transform node and that we can use the merge if it's coming in through the foreground. But that's not really, that's just kind of all of this. So let's add in this item here and we will connect this up. And then on here, I will just add some more text and we'll play that over here. So now we have this over here and then this node is, is down here. So if I take this, I could move this here, but then we're not moving our whole thing, right? And then if I, if I move this, this is just gonna move the top, right? So we're, we're not really, uh, this isn't really working out in our benefit, but what we can do is we can take this, we, we are going to control everything from this X and Y, right? On merge two. That's the one that we want to use. And we can take these values and use them anywhere. So if I wanted to, I could take the text layer here. 
I have an X and a Y, right? You can do, you can right click here and go into expressions and then we can write in the expression. So what an expression is, is that you're just creating the values for whatever it's in. You can create expressions for all of these and then it's just, it, it's an equation typically um, of how it's going to produce the values for that particular, whatever that thing is. So we'll close this and close this. And what we will do is we will take the merge to and the center. So what we're gonna first write in is the node. So we're going to be doing merge to dot. And then we're gonna say what value in that node that we want to copy over. We're gonna to wanna to copy over center. You have to make sure that you capitalize everything correctly. Uh, now, what happened is our, our node here moved here, but it's centered where the center is on here. So our center's here, it's centered the text here. So that's not exactly what we want. So let's just remove that and reset. What we could do for here, because we want to copy over the value, in here, we could write that in here yeah. instead. Oh, I didn't copy it over. And now that we copied it over, it's doing the same exact thing, but we can go into our text now and position it. The cool thing here is because every, all of this, uh, all of these elements are connected, even though that they are, you know, in different areas, because they're all connected to this X and Y, we can now move them all together. So you can mix and match. Just because we put a merge, you know, merge and a merge, you could simply just take the transform instead and you know have the transform come into here, take this value, switch this up, put that value in there, then come into here remove this, connect this up and it's still the same. And we still have the same, you know, controls. Now, you could do it this way, but if you're working on something that gets kind of big and uh, you're having a lot of nodes that are, you know, all over the place and you're not sure, oh, was it that one that everything's connected to? We could do instead of doing the guessing game is you could just simply come in and do custom tool and now in the custom tool you have x and y for all of these so all you would need to do is let's actually re change the name of this so it's a little easier we'll just name this uh, ct and now when we are in in all of these we will just call ct so we'll do ct dot but in here, what it's called is point in one. So we're gonna put that in here. So now point in one, we'll move everything up here. Now, the funny thing is this, or all of the, or this node is copying whatever this has in the center position. And this one is copying whatever is in this one. You can, as you go through, you can just put in you know, whatever that is, instead of what you would typically do, just pig whipping, which is kind of doing the same thing, you're just going to uh, connect it to whatever this is. So it's when you're writing the, ex the expression here, it's whatever the node's name is. So the node can have a completely different name, whatever the node's name is, dot, whatever the value, whatever the value is. So we want point in one, and point in one has an X and a Y value. Now we can move this X and Y value and we can, you know, have it animated if we want to. So we can come here, frame 20, go there, frame 100, come up here. And now we have a very linear move. If we wanted to, we could come up here to spline editor and then the CT point in one, click this button, see both of our nodes. Then we can just highlight our nodes, hit F, 
Now we have ease in and ease out. We could highlight them, hit T, and now you can change how much you ease. So now if we watch this, it's not linear anymore, it has a little bit of velocity and then it slows down and creeps in. Um, it's kind of how you, how you do that. Uh, so the main thing here is just determining how you're going to set up everything. What I personally like doing, if I know if it's gonna, that it's gonna be a complex um, effect, I like just building it, like you see here, just building it in the center so it looks great. And then when it goes out to be placed on something else, that's when I can then move it to, a, to another position that I like. And uh, yeah, that's, that's kind of uh, all there is to, to setting this up. And then what we could do additionally is now we have all of them working together, right? If we wanted to, we could come into the text and we could say, okay, at frame 20, I'll just bring it over here. Frame 20, you're gonna be right there. And then at frame uh, 65, you're going to come over this much and we're going to go into where text two and text two, I'm just gonna turn that off. Text two, we're gonna do a ease in and ease out like that. Now, if I play this node, if we're looking over here, it starts off and then it goes whoosh. So we can just start to, you know, add on to this and start creating more and more. And all of this, except for the, the text, all of this is just run by two, two uh, keyframes. None of this has keyframes, as you can see. This is the only thing that has keyframes because the text moves on its own. But every all of this has, you know, I can just I can come in and change this up however I want, and it'll change my whole effect. So that's kind of how the you would go about doing something that's similar to a null object where you you know you have a whole bunch of things connected to one particular point and then you move that point. Uh, there are other things out there like a fuse that you can use, but you need to know a little bit more. This is straight out of the box. You install the program. There's nothing to add, nothing like that. Um, and you can just connect everything just using expressions. There's a ton more things that you can do with this because you can start to come into here and you could, you know, change this to, um, uh, you could change this to and, and, and do times by two. And now we are taking the values here and times it by two and divide by uh, three. So there's all kinds of like weird things that you could do and, you know, start adding in different equations to do all sorts of stuff. But yeah, with that said, that's kind of all I have for you for today. Let me know in the comments what you think about this one. If you have any other ideas or suggestions, let me know down there as well. Again, my name's JR and thanks for watching.